Welcome to the first in a series of Photoshop texture tutorials. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you in one easy flat file how to create a texture similar to the one that I'm showing you here. As these tutorials progress, I'd like to show you how I could create, how you could create, a single file that you could keep editing to generate texture after texture after texture without having to remember all of these steps. Let's take it simply though and go through this process the first time step by step and see how I've done it. I start with a blank white file using the add noise filter. The noise filter is interesting because it's one of the few filters that actually allows you to start with a white image. Noise, add noise. I can create very little noise so that you can barely see it or not see it much at all. I can create a lot of noise. I can create uniform noise, Gaussian noise, or colored noise. I think for a texture for an image, the most practical setting is monochromatic and Gaussian. And I'm going to choose just about a middle value here and click OK. The critical steps in this process are to blur this noise, find the edges of it, and then see what kind of patterns are actually hidden in the blur. So our next step is to blur the image. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur bring it back onto the image itself. And we can go from almost no result at all to obliterating the entire image so that there's no detail left in it. I like to pull it back to a place where I can just about start to see the texture. So I'm going to choose for this example 9.4 pixels and click OK. Now we need to see what kind of edges Photoshop can find. So we'll use the Filter, Stylize, Find Edges filter. You have no options. It finds what it finds. It looks like it didn't find much of anything, but that really isn't the case. If I choose Image Adjustments Levels, and I drag my black point slider, you can see that it's actually found quite a lot. At this point, I could force the image to be a solid black and white if what I wanted was a very tiny amoeba structure. Or I can pull this back and use slightly fewer uh, amoebas, or at least slightly less distinct amoebas and more gray shades. I'm going to do it that way and click OK. Uh, this is, could be finished at this point, but I still feel that for textile design, unless you're doing digital printing, you really need to cut down on the kind of gradient grays that you've got in here. You would still have 256 levels of gray in this, in this particular texture, and that is too many if you're going to be doing screen printing. So here's how I fix the texture to make it more suitable for me to use. Uh, the next step is to choose Filter, Noise, Median. The Median filter will clump these pixels together according to the radius that I've selected. If I choose a radius of 1, it doesn't do much clumping. If I choose a larger radius, it clumps to the point where I've lost the texture. I don't know what I have, but it's certainly not a texture. So the idea is to pull this back again to something that you like that has an interesting range of little clumps in it. I'm going to use the median of 10 and click OK. Now I want to cut down on the specific number of levels I have in here. Sometimes it's not necessary, but I always try the Image Adjustments Posterize. Where are we? 
here. Image adjustments, posterize. To see how many levels I can get rid of. Here we have four levels. If I select the number in the levels and press the up or down arrow key, it's much easier for me to see what happens with the changes. At a certain point here, we will get no change at all. I can look to see where the clumping is that I like. Okay, let's see what that does for us at 23. I still need to refine these a bit more. In particular, I want to make them less jagged. If I look closely here, you can see all of my very jagged edges. And that's a function of the posterize adjustment that we put in there. While I still, I do like the jagged edges if you're going to index the color, this is not where I want the image to be. So I can use the image adjustments, dust and scratches, excuse me, filter, noise, dust and scratches. And that's going to take, based on my radius, and again, do much of what levels did, but it seems to make a smoother edge on it, which is why I like it. So here are the shapes that I like in these edges. And this is a radius of 9. I'm going to click OK. Again, I can use it as it is, or I can use the Levels command again. Image Adjustment Levels to come in here and see where I want the values to be. At this point, I want to push my values more closely together and see if I can separate these two values at least a little bit more. OK. I think that pretty much does what I want. So I'm done with this for right now. Realize that if you actually wanted to force this back to black and white, you could do this at any stage after your median after your median step by using the image adjustments threshold command and setting your black and white where you wanted it to be. I'm not going to do that right now. I rather like this. So I'm going to save this, and this is what I can use as the basis of several other ways of creating texture on an image. And I'll show you that step in another tutorial. In addition to this, I will also continue to show you how you can create this file in a way that you can keep changing your mind about it and go back and try setting after setting without losing anything to make it non-destructive. That's all for now. I think you have enough to think about in just this much. I'm Sherry London, aka The Prancing Pixel. Till later.